Learning a new skill takes time. Using child-directed play effectively will take a little practice, but you are bound to have fun along the way. For the adult participants, there are four common stumbling blocks. Making suggestions, making corrections, filling all the silence, and becoming distracted. Expect to occasionally make these common errors as you learn, but show your child that it is okay even for grown-ups to make mistakes when learning something new. The work is worth the reward. Child-directed play is more than just spending time playing with a child. It is a well-researched and respectful way to celebrate children for who they are right now. It is a joyful way to communicate to a child that they matter. Child-directed play fosters well-being and strengthens a relationship between an adult and a child. During child-directed play, the adult offers the child two important things, their undivided attention and complete control over the play session. Because of this attention and control, child-directed play is restorative. It can return the feelings of strength and peace that are often taken away by life's challenges. It can refresh a child who feels frustrated and can calm a child who feels anxious. Learning to play with a child in this way takes some getting used to, and that's okay. As with all things, practice and reflection are the keys to success. This video will outline the four main stumbling blocks adults encounter when learning to play in a child-directed way. Stumbling block number one, making suggestions. Start a child-directed play session by simply asking, would you like to play with me? When your child says yes, ask them what they'd like to do. It is tempting to offer a menu of options, but don't. The child will be able to come up with something all on their own. If, after a few moments, they still don't offer an idea, ask a follow-up question such as, let's see, what would be fun right now? Or, where should we go to get a good idea? And whatever they suggest, get on board, because that's the game. The child leads, you follow. Of course, there are a few obvious exceptions here. Clearly, you can't do anything dangerous, destructive, or overly time-consuming. But if it is in the category of regular kid fun, such as an elaborate game of pretend or building a fort out of couch cushions, then just follow the instructions provided to you by your pint-sized play director. Be aware of phrases such as these. Let's play with these. Those are really fun, but we already played with those. Let's play with these instead. Hey, let's play hide and seek. I know it's your favorite. Letting them choose without your input sends the message, you are capable of making good choices and I trust your ideas. Making corrections. This is another tricky one for people new to child-directed play. Adults are used to correcting young children in an effort to help them learn a skill or understand the world around them. And outside of child-directed play, this type of support does have its place. However, during this 20 or 30 minute play session, adults should refrain from correcting choices having to do with play. In other situations, you might call some of these play choices cheating. In child-directed play, however, we say, someone made up the rules. You're a someone. You can invent rules too. You do have great ideas. Again, there are obvious exceptions, most having to do with safety. But outside of keeping your child safe, let them make the rules, change the rules, bend their own rules, and hold you to different or evolving rules. Let them pretend without bringing them back to reality. It is okay. There is plenty of time for reality. Right now, you're not trying to show them the correct way to play. Your goal here is to help them feel validated and worthwhile, to foster a sense of joy and calm, and to strengthen your relationship. Refrain from making comments such as these. Ezekiel, this one is two. How many snowmen are there? We've been practicing this one a lot. How many snowmen? Two. Three. Four. Five. I win. Wait, 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 wait. It's my turn. Here. 
Oh, let's not take out the food and the blocks. Let's just do blocks right now. Stumbling block number three, filling all the silence. Have you ever been in an elevator with an acquaintance? After exchanging a few pleasantries, the elevator probably fell quiet. <clears throat> it's a little awkward, right? You may have felt a small but nagging urge to say something more, a comment about the weather or the success of a local sports team, something. I'm here to tell you that this is an adult thing. Little kids do not feel this social pressure. Lucky them. This is important because in child-directed play, you do not have to fill up all the quiet with talking. In fact, you shouldn't. There will be times of quiet and it is your job to act as an observer and let it be. When they want to talk to you, they will. A little quiet might be exactly what they need. Another way adults fill the silence is to insert an agenda of skill development. For example, you might be tempted to ask, how many race cars do you have? To reinforce counting and one-to-one -one correspondence, or what color is this barn? To check in color identification. The child may come to associate playtime with mommy with being quizzed and being corrected, and suddenly they're not so in charge anymore. Save the skill building for another time. Kids also like to voice their internal stream of thoughts, so sometimes they'll narrate their play. Don't feel like you have to respond, especially if you can tell they are not specifically talking to you. You can choose to narrate your parallel play or just enjoy the little window into their thoughts. A steady stream of questions, although well-intended, will interrupt the story that is unfolding in their mind and could be misconstrued as criticisms of their play choices. Don't fall into this trap. Oh, I think they're thirsty. Are they thirsty? Let's go to the water. Oh, here's a rhino. What's his name? Do you think the snake likes the water? I think he likes the water. Oh, a baby rhino. Do you think he's the baby and that's the mommy? Do you think this guy's his friend? Or should I put, I'll put him over here. Oh, look, orangutan. What's your favorite animal? I like the orangutan. Oh, and here's a whale. He's friends with that guy. And a bear. Which one's bigger? The bear or the rhino? Which one's the biggest? Stumbling block number four, becoming distracted. These days, there is no shortage of things competing for our attention. Text messages, calendar alerts, and social media notifications are relative newcomers to the tried and true tasks of life. Laundry, starting dinner, paying the bills, and a catalog of other duties continually vie for our attention. So we realize it is not easy to set aside 20 or 30 minutes when you do nothing more than focus on playing with your child. For this set period of time though, it is their to-do list you are attending to, not yours. Plan a child-directed play session when your other children are napping or out of the house. Silence cell phones and put electronic devices in the other room. Turn off the TV. Truly allow your child to have all of your attention. You'll be saying, you are the most important thing to me, and providing the proof all at the same time, and your child will absolutely love it. Try to avoid situations like these. This is the great restaurant. Yeah, cool, good job. Can you help me do this restaurant? Cool. Mommy, do you have a school bus? Do you have a school bus? Mommy, do you have a school bus? Mommy, do you have a school bus? Do you have a school bus? Um, okay. What was it? A school bus. Uh, yes, school bus. There you go. While you are getting used to this new way of playing, it is okay to admit to your child if you have made a mistake. Let them see that there are missteps, even for you, on the road to learning something new. Keep practicing. And in this case, the practice is also the reward.